The Challenged Athletes Foundation is celebrating 30 years and joining us now to talk more about the monuments of anniversaries <laughs> and CIF <laughs> co-founder Bob Babbitt joining us. Bob, this is uh, such a huge milestone and congratulations on well, 30 years. Well, thanks, Lauren. And a lot of this would not have happened without the relationship with KUSI because you guys have for really for 30 years been showcasing our athletes going back to the first event we did, Jim McLaren was on KUSI talking about how we had just created this event specifically to raise money to help him. Talk a little bit about that because you were a publisher, you were covering yes. sports, that's how you knew Jim McLaren. Yeah. Talk a little bit about how his life was transformed and that just kind of set off what is now $159 million <laughs> later in 30 years to benefit others. Yeah, it's, it's fascinating because when I had Competitor Magazine, there was something about you'd go and cover a running event and you'd talk to the guy who won the race and he'd go, hey, I, I went fast. But then I met a wheelchair racer, this is long before CAF, named Jim Knob, who was an Olympic trials pole vaulter, had been paralyzed, going to a workout, he was on his motorcycle, got hit by a car, it's sort of a theme. Right. And Jimmy, I was doing a piece on him for the magazine. It was just something, the depth that they were bringing to the table. And I remember sitting with Jimmy, and I was in his house, and it was a nickel on the floor. And I'm thinking, oh my God, what's, what's going on with that? And I go down to pick up nickel, and it's glued to the floor. And Jimmy's drinking a beer and looking at me, he goes, Babbitt, rule number one, don't ever underestimate anybody. Because he was like, you didn't think the poor guy in a wheelchair could pick up a nickel off right. the floor. Mm -hmm. And that led to just, I believed in the stories of these athletes. And when I met Jim McLaren, who, was, who lost his leg, came back from that with a walking leg to run a 316 marathon, then went to Hawaii and went 1042 at the Ironman, top 20% of everybody in the race. That's where I met Jimmy and did a piece on Jimmy. And when he got injured again, eight years later, there was no mm -hmm. question that we had to do something for, for Jimmy. And it was really just, let's get Jimmy when he became a quadriplegic. He was doing a race in Orange County. A van went through a closed intersection, hit the back of his bike, propelled him head first in a pole. A guy who's an amputee became a quadriplegic. Oh, and so wow. myself, my buddy Jeffrey Esikow, our other friend Rick Kozlowski, who put on events, the three of us got together and we put on this triathlon. The goal was to raise 25K to get Jimmy a van with hand controls. Because the thing you lose when you become paralyzed, independence. You need mom and dad. Somebody needs to carry you around. You're 30 years old. You're an independent person, now you're not. So at that point, we put on this race and we raised 40, 49, thought our job was done. And then three amputee women came up to us that day and said, it's great we did it for Jimmy, but did you know when you get injured, your health insurance covers a walking around leg or an everyday wheelchair, but nothing to do with sport is covered by insurance because they consider sport a luxury item. Yeah. And everybody out there who's watching knows sport is a huge part of who we are, what we do, and it makes us feel comfortable in our own skin. It eliminates the opioids, eliminates all the other things that detract from you as a person. It, it helps that that mind, body, spirit. Absolutely. I mean, you you have to have sports and activity and yep. an active lifestyle to get the benefits. Yes. And and it, it benefits everything else and everyone around you. And that is what clicks, I think, with CAF and all of these wonderful individuals that yes. you have allowed us to meet. <laughs> I, I mean, truly, because it's it's there are so many athletes that you have brought into this studio that I've interviewed that I literally, Bob, think of on a daily basis when, you know, maybe something isn't going my way or I'm meeting a struggle yeah. and I think, you know what, you, you have to keep perspective and you have to look at turning a bad situation into a positive situation and find the light. And that is what every single athlete that you've brought in here has done. They have used what you've given them to find the light through the, the gift of sport. And it's, it's incredible. You, you never want to underestimate the power of sport. And the, the CAF team does such an amazing job. 105 different sports. We've given out grants now. <laughs> we just gave out our first grant in wheelchair pickleball. Who the heck knew that was going to happen? And and the the technology is changing, so and much. that's really going to help a lot of people with disabilities. I know Ali was just doing a story on a robotic yes. hand, and and that kind of a thing can really change what people with disabilities are able to do. Right? It, well, it's fascinating. When Jim McLaren was injured 30 years ago there was nothing for him. There was no sport for him. Right. Well, now there's power soccer. Well, he could be playing power soccer. He could be playing quad rugby. There's sports that are there. And think about if you're paralyzed, all of a sudden the trails disappear. 
You can't go hiking because your hands are going in the dirt. Mm -hmm. Well, now we've got off-road e-assist hand cycles that cost fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. So back in the day when we were buying wheelchair basketball chairs for the three to five thousand dollars. Well, now you've got equipment that cost because of the technology, mm -hmm. because of so many great people out there who are creating. Who would have thought off-road e-assist hand cycle? Somebody who's paralyzed, going off on the trails by themselves or with a buddy, and loving the trails just like we do. And that, to me, is you're giving people, same with Jim McLaren, independence, freedom. That's what it's all about. So I know there is uh, an anniversary weekend coming up in October, yes. and September 1st is also an important date. So so let's get through uh, yes. first uh, the, the grant applications. Yes, so September 1st, we open up grant applications, and that's when people from all over the world, we've now sent out grants in 50, all 50 states and 73 countries, they apply for everything from a hand cycle to a racing chair to travel expenses. Last year, 3,996 grants went out in the spring, totaling $7 million. That's, that's what this time of year is. And this is our happiest time for our mm -hmm. team because we're, you're seeing these stories come in and some of the stories of how people were injured are mind boggling yeah. and we've had a lot of them out here. Yeah. And then 30th anniversary kicks off, celebration of abilities is Friday night, the October 20th, but we have adaptive surfing clinics, uh, wheelchair basketball clinics, wheelchair tennis. We have the triathlon, San Diego Triathlon Challenge, the 30th anniversary of that on Sunday. It's a three ring circus all weekend long and 150 challenge athletes from all over the world. Sometimes we lose sight of how important that is because a lot of our challenge athletes come from little cities where they've never seen another person like them. Mm -hmm. And then they come here, as one mom told me, my son came here and for 363 days a year, he feels different. He feels like he's, mm -hmm. people are always staring at him. Yeah. Comes here and there's legs laying all over the place. <laughs> Right? He, yeah. And he feels like I, I, am, I belong. Right. I have a kinship with a group around me. And if they can do it, why can't I do it? There's a lot right. of mentoring that people yeah. learn from this weekend. Oh, and the, the friendships that are built between the athletes Forever. is also an amazing thing because it's, it's a struggle that not, not many know, but they, they realize it together. The bond that yeah. created. We, we have a group of young women who met when they're seven, eight, nine years old, and now they're all 17, 18, 19 years old, and they are friends forever from meeting at San Diego Triathlon Challenge. Amazing. All right, so Challenged Athletes Foundation, CAF, uh, you, can, you can visit the website, find out different ways to yep. help take part in the weekend. Yeah, people can participate. We've got a 5K, we've got the triathlon. Come on out and volunteer with the OSA Running Clinic on Saturday, you see kids go from, you know, they're getting their, their little legs on for the first time, and next thing you know, they're Carl Lewis sprinting all over the grass. So that you see that transformation right in front of you. I, I'd encourage everybody, just come out for the weekend. We'll be at Mission Bay, right across from Roller Coaster. It's, it's a cathartic weekend. It's a beautiful thing. Bob, thanks so much for all you do. Again, we can't say thank you enough. It's, it's uh, incredible, and congratulations on 30 years. Thank you so much. We couldn't have done it without KUSI. You guys have been amazing.